Beautiful. So we can all just come and settle in here. Arrive. Just let go of what has been this morning. Everything. Every thought. Every belief. We can let them fly away. As we take a moment here with ourselves, with God. You may want to take a deep breath. You may want to close your eyes if that feels relaxing. And I seek but what belongs to me in truth. This is today's lesson of the course, 104. Jesus is so loving here, so helping us. Guiding us to this peace and joy that, that is our right, that is our natural state of mind and again he helps us to find this state of mind today's idea continues with the thought that joy and peace are not but idle dreams they are your right because of what you are they come to you from god we cannot fail to give you what he wills. You must, yet must there be a place made ready to receive his gifts. They are not welcomed gladly by a mind that has instead received the gifts it made where his belong, as substitutes for them. So there must be a place made ready to receive God's gifts of joy and love and peace. They are not welcomed gladly by a mind that has instead received the gifts it made by itself, where his belongs, and, and as a substitute for them. So even here in the first paragraph, we are helped pointing out that we have made our own gifts to ourselves as a substitute for God's gifts to us. We, we have just rejected his gifts and made up our own gifts of pain, of suffering, or righteousness, or fear, or, or things we desire in form. Today, we would remove all meaningless and self-made gifts, which we have placed upon the altar, the holy altar, where God's gifts belong. Today, we would remove all them. This is the lesson. If we commit to doing A Course in Miracles lessons, this is what we do today. We remove all the meaningless and self-made gifts which we have placed upon the holy altar where God's gifts belong. His are the gifts that are our own in truth. His are the gifts that we inherited before time was, and that will still be ours when time has passed into eternity. These gifts are eternal. These are the gifts that are within us now, for they are timeless, and we need not wait to have them. They belong to us today. Isn't this lovely? We do not need to wait for them. 
Only if we refuse them, only if we place something else on the altar, will we have to wait. But that is the gift we give ourselves, which isn't a gift. It's beautiful. Therefore, we choose to have them now and know in choosing them in place of what we made, we but unite our will with what God wills and recognize the same as being one. Our longer practice periods today, the hourly five minutes, given truth for your salvation, should begin with this. I seek but what belongs to me in truth, and joy and peace are my inheritance. Then lay aside the conflicts of the world that offer other gifts and other goals made of illusions, witnessed to by them, and sought for only in a world of dreams. And lay aside, he says, just lay it aside, the conflicts of the world that offer other gifts. All this we lay aside and seek instead that which is truly ours. As we ask to recognize what God has given us, so we can even ask this within what is it that God gives? What is it that God has given us before time was and still gives? We clear a holy place within our minds before his altar where his gifts of peace and joy are welcome and to which we come to find what has been given what has been given us by him, we clear a place in our mind. This is an active, willing act of letting go of what doesn't serve. And all we need is our willingness and our own intention. Becoming confidence today, aware that what belongs to us in truth is what he gives. We can come in confidence today, aware that what belongs to us in truth is what he gives. And we would wish for nothing else, for nothing else belongs to us in truth. So do we clear the way for him today by simply recognizing that his will is done already and that joy and peace belong to us as his eternal gifts. We will not let ourselves lose sight of them between the times we come to seek for them where he has laid them. This reminder will we bring to mind as often as we can. As often as we can, we can use our minds in a way that helps us, we say, I seek but what belongs to me in truth. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. As often as we can, say, I seek but what belongs to me in truth. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. I don't want pain. Good. I don't want mental pain. Good. I don't want physical pain. Good. These are not God's gifts. You can relax to eat to this and not hold on any painful thought, any thought of split or separation. This is the power of our mind that we have. We have the power to choose. God's joy and peace are mine. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. 
today I seek nothing else. If you notice the thoughts that seek something else, drop them like a hot potato, give them over. The Holy Spirit takes them and they truly will disappear. And we give over unhelpful or painful thoughts. Or meaningless thoughts. It can be idle thoughts, mind wandering. Jesus tells us we don't watch our minds closely enough. So there's an invitation to release all mind wandering, all idle thinking. We can even ask what kind of thoughts are more helpful and even open our minds to being guided with our thinking. The inner guide knows what is healing and helpful. If we question pain, it goes away. If we're willing to look at fear, pain will go away. And we do have an inner guide that is always available. Constant inner support.
Saint Francis' prayer comes to mind here. He says, let me not seek to be loved as much as to love. Because when we love, we don't need anything from the world. We just let the love pour through. And we know we are truly loved in giving. We don't need someone to need us. But we love for love itself. Just to feel, just to experience. Love.
The body is the ego's home by its own election. The body is the ego's home by its own election. It is the only identification with which the ego feels safe. Since the body's vulnerability is its own best argument that you cannot be of God. The, the body's vulnerability is the ego's best argument that you cannot be of God. This is the belief that the ego sponsors eagerly. Yet the ego hates the body because it cannot accept it as good enough to be its own. So even though it has taken it as its home, it cannot accept it as good enough. Here is where the mind becomes actually dazed. Being told by the ego that it is really part of the body and that the body is its protector, the mind is also told that the body cannot protect it. Very twisted. Therefore, the mind asks, where can I go for protection? To which the ego replies, turn to me. The mind, and not without cause, reminds the ego that it has itself insisted that it is identified with the body, so there is no point in turning to it for protection. The ego has no real answer to this because there is none. But it does have a typical solution. It obliterates the question from the mind's awareness. The question, where can I go for protection? The ego obliterates from awareness. Once out of awareness, the question can and does produce uneasiness, but it cannot be answered because it cannot be asked, because it is in the subconscious. It has been pushed out of awareness. So this uneasiness, Jesus says that all separated ones experience this constant inner conflict, this uneasiness, comes from having a subconscious mind that has not been made conscious. So this is the question that must be asked, where can I go for protection? Seek and you shall find does not mean that you should seek blindly and desperately for something you would not recognize. Meaningful seeking is consciously undertaken, consciously, consciously organized, and consciously directed. Meaningful seeking is conscious. The goal must be formulated clearly and kept in mind. Learning and wanting to learn are inseparable. You learn best when you believe what you're trying to learn is, is of value to you. Learning and wanting to learn are inseparable. If you don't want to learn, you won't learn. So that's open mind that wants to learn, learns. It's like sometimes we say being in the yes, being in the experience of an open yes to, to God or to our inner guide. So you learn best when you believe what you're trying to learn is of value to you. However, not everything you may want to learn has lasting value. Indeed, many of the things you want to learn may be chosen because their value will not last. 
and we seek temporary solutions to answer the inner yearning. Like when maybe with food is the most common food or sex or pride or many different, you know, things that we answer this call. But their value will not last. The ego thinks it is an advantage not to commit itself to anything that is eternal because the eternal must come from God. It's logical. The ego doesn't like God. The ego doesn't exist in God. Eternalness is the one function the ego has tried to develop but has systematically failed to achieve. So the ego is, you know, within the mind, as is the spirit. And the ego wants to make eternal what can't be eternal, like pleasure, like things the body seem to want or need. The ego would love if they could be eternal so that we can forever be lazy and stay asleep. <laughs> That's the ego's anger at God. That is, that is this constant distraction from seeking what has true value. What if we always sought what has true value first? Whenever the ego gives us a yearning or a desire or an impulse, what if we train our mind so much we just say, well, I, I see this, I see this impulse or this distraction, but first I'm actually going to desire what's truly valuable. I'm going to give some space for what I truly, really want. And you can be gentle. You can say, well, then maybe later I can get this, you know, <laughs> and it may fall away. You may get so full with the experience of spirit that you, you don't care for this other thing that the ego suggested. satiated, becoming full of spirit. Say that word, satiation. Satiated or satiated. Yeah. Feeling complete. True satisfaction. Jesus says all true satisfaction comes from doing God's will. True satisfaction comes from doing God's will, period. Only that. And we have the capacity to open up that channel within. The ego compromises with the issue of the eternal, just as it does with all issues touching on the real question in any way. It struggles with this by becoming involved with tangen tangential issues. It hopes to hide the real question and keep it out of mind. I guess tan tangential issues are things you can touch things of form sort of off of course tangential it's of like an off mm. diversion mm. what's on a tangent mm -hmm. yeah you heard that expression being diverted being led into a dead end is the ego's way of not dealing with a real question 
where can I go for safety? I think if we really allow that question up into our conscious awareness, it's logical to seek God for safety. I actually think that's why for me, it was almost a desperation in my seeking for God. When I was younger, it was this, yeah, I'm not going to go for anything else. The ego's characteristic business with non, non-essentials is for precisely that purpose. Preoccupations with problems set up to be incapable of solution are favorite ego devices for impeding learning progress. Focusing and being preoccupied with meaningless problems. Problems set up to be incapable of solution our favorite ego devices for impeding learning progress. Be focused on things that don't have a solution. In all these di- diversionary tactics, however, the one question that is never asked by those who pursue them is what for? What for? This is the question that you must learn to ask in connection with everything. What is it for? What is the purpose? Whatever it is, it will direct your efforts automatically. Good mind training practice. What is it for? Whatever it is, it will direct your efforts automatically. When you make a decision of purpose then, you have made a decision about your future effort, a decision that will remain in effect unless you change your mind. This reminds me of setting the goal. The goal is peace. Situations that appear will be seen as opportunities for peace of mind. No matter what, these situations are, the mind will automatically use them for peace of mind. So it's helpful to ask, what is it for? And we can allow this unconscious question, where can I go for protection? We can allow that to become conscious. And even to see when the ego says, turn to me. All the times that happen. And then it's going to become automatic to seek God because it's the only natural, it's the only real experience. The ego will become more and more unreal, will fall away. What for? Keep asking that, what for? We definitely don't need to protect a small self to defend the self-concept or ego. see that in the mind and say no I don't I don't need to protect littleness or why would I need to defend something that isn't me in truth.
This reading was from the Ego Body Illusion, Chapter 4, Part 5. Nice section to read. It, this section starts with all things work together for good. There are no exceptions except in the ego's judgment. This is a nice one. All things work together for good except in the ego's judgment. We need a discrimination between the body and the thoughts of God. The ego lacks this discrimination. Thoughts of God are unacceptable to the ego because they clearly point to the non-existence of the ego itself. I think that's why the untrained mind can go for long periods without thinking of God. We don't realize we're sleepwalking in those, at those times. And we may come to a point where we realize, oh, where have I been the last couple of days? <laughs> what did I do? And we make a prayer and we come back to being connected again. Truth will be returned to us by our desire for it. It was lost to us by our desire for something other than truth. Desiring it is key. It's the power of the mind. Good, good ideas. <laughs> yeah, we can open up the room if anyone has anything you'd like to explore together. Any thoughts on this? What's that? Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, something has shifted for me because I feel so uh, much more forgiving and welcoming to every reaction that I have during the day and instead of trying anything you know I simply just let it come up and let myself feel it and do nothing with it and and I can do it on my own uh, you know when I ah oh, it's amazing it's so liberating it's so easy and, <laughs> and the more I do it, the more happy I get. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, it's it's fantastic. So that was one thing, and then yeah. I also encountered something within me that is uh, that I that I that keeps coming back that I can't. Um, so that's why I wanted to bring it up here. And it's a thing with my own reaction, of course, but of course my ego wants it to be about how bad my daughter is. <laughs> so that's what my ego does. Uh, and um, when I thought about bringing it up with you guys, I saw that I, again, is invested for my own sake. <laughs> it's not for her or anything. 
So there I see my own and then I, okay, well, makes sense from the ego's point of view, right? <laughs> Wants to make everything better. Um, but I, I still want help to, uh, because I can't seem to forgive it. I seem to have a hard, I mean, I do have a hard time when she comes with her hate, hatred and despise and to her brother, you know, and it's been going on for a very long time. And uh, yeah, so I don't need a story about her, but that's what it is. It's she bringing it up. She is just oozing it, you know, in, 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 in my house, in our house. And at times I know she doesn't want to feel it. I mean, if I were her, I, I didn't want to have any of it because it's so hard. But I feel it in myself that I don't know how to, to, to deal with it. I, 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 I feel myself when she did it last time. I judge her for it. Yeah. And I, and I feel like, well, fuck off then. That's what I feel like saying. Fuck, fuck off. Go away from my house. You know, mm -hmm. if you can't deal with your own hatred and you keep spitting it out on him. But you don't allow yourself to say that. No. I think, you know, diving. I don't think it's really, I, mean, I think if I did die, then. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm afraid if I say it. And also, <laughs> what I want to go here instead, instead of reacting, because obviously, it brings up something that I am not willing to forgive, not myself or her. So you know? there is no I or her. You know, there is just the mind, you know. You need to go into the thoughts in the mind, these specialness thoughts. The special relationship is the ego's most boasted gift. It's the... You know, and, and mothers and daughters and sons, you know, parents and children. It's, it's special relationships. Mm. So it seems like you have really found a way to work with your emotions and your, you know, and, and that's beautiful. That's this teaching in the light of communication where Jesus says, keep nothing hidden. Mm. You know, you have learned to give it all over each emotion except for when you come to this yeah this is still something uh, uh, and yeah it is the special relationship so i'm angry at her is obviously not the truth i i must be angry at myself or something and, and, and judge myself. I'm never, yeah, I'm never upset for the reason I think. Exactly. I'm angry because I see something that isn't there. So the world is what that is. You can't lie to yourself and say, what you perceive is happening is not happening. You know, no. that's the true use of the metaphysics. It's to look. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's to look at the specialness in the mind, mm -hmm. the fear of letting it go. It's an idol. Even the hatred against her and the protectionism around him, they were actually both kind of two things here that in the same category.
so I am angry because I would want her to 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 deal with it. So that that must be, that's exactly what I I'm telling you now. I I I also feel like I want to deal with it, but I don't know how. And it's the same for her, obviously. She doesn't know how to deal with it. Nobody gives anyone in this world any tools for it, basically. But I'm putting this on her, that she should be able to handle it, and she should already have done it by now. Well, I think you're angry because you believe she's your daughter and you're her mother. And what does it matter what relationship there is if I have a reaction within me? What does it? I mean, I, I would like to understand you, how that could help me, what you're saying, but I don't get it. You don't know who she is. You don't know who anyone is. No. But I, I know what's going on within me, and I don't like it. It's, it's not love. It's the opposite of love. Well, can we propose you don't actually fully know what love is? No, that's true. In this moment, I certainly don't know it. Because... It can be a pseudo piece where she doesn't have those. And you may call that love. I I, I don't understand anything about what, what, what you're saying now. <laughs> like Cold War or or you know, the, the ego has its version of what is good and yeah. nice and loving. Yeah, exactly. But that is not real love. We are called to find what real love is. And we can start by saying, I do not know what love is. No, I don't know. And I don't like what's happening now either. I don't like anything of this. <laughs> I don't like what you're saying. I don't understand what you're saying. And I don't I don't like that I don't understand. So I'm going to welcome it all. <sighs> and if I say hand her over, how does that land in you? Give her over. That will be... A relief. Good. <laughs> because you can give her over to the Holy Spirit. And then my brain goes, but what how how does that look? You know, what am I supposed to do the next time? And I hear it, so I'm not asking you about it. I'm just saying. How the ego wants to know. <laughs> it's so fascinating. Well, the, the answer may be for you to take your step. You think that this is something going on in her. Yeah. But it's, it, this is all happening within you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I've heard Jenny share a few times about how before she came 
to America, her son had this problem, this big problem. And it seemed like his problem. It seemed like his thing that he was going through. But what happened when she took her step? His problem disappeared. You know, there are those nine chapters about special relationships in the course. And you can do it here in this instant or you can read them. You know, there is help. But just really to know this, how strong it is. And that's why there's so such good teachers, you know. And that's why I'm blind in here. And that's why I need help to, because I think it's about them, you know, just like you were saying. And I can feel it because it's just repetitive, you know, but not, no, this is not repetitive. I don't usually feel sick or feeling all this like, twitching and twerk. It's like, <laughs> I so this is new. This is great because this is about me, right? Mm. when it's about you then you're not the victim exactly it's because you have the power to choose okay. what you believe mm. and it's happening for me in the moment it's what's left in me you know I am right yeah And I see that what I judge her for is how I judge myself so harshly, or have been more, but it's the same. You know? Yeah. Yeah, this is very helpful. Because now my mind goes to, you know, I have this moment when it happens in my head and I I don't have any question anymore or what should I do or anything out there because it, I just feel that it's it's just here you know that's all all i need to go and that's all i need to be busy about it's here yeah and, and that's and that's a relief and that's what i'm doing with you guys too wow yeah That's beautiful. And I get curious to read more about special relationships. Yeah, you can benefit from that. Yeah. And also curious for, for the next time, actually. I mean, I, I can even feel that, oh, 
right. <laughs> but what I mean is that this focus, that the, the focus lands on her instead of on me. And now I'm just back to here. And, and there was huge liberation because I even felt that there is no her anymore. There is nothing. There is no one else out there. That's how deep it felt. And that's why it was such a relief for me because it's it's just here, you know. And that's what you and the course and everything is pointing to. That it's, and, and that's, yeah, it's just my... my way is to undo what's in the way you know to feel yeah well this was very helpful <laughs> yeah i'm so grateful for you guys and i'm so grateful for 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 the teaching it's incredible Incredible how simple and how practical it can be, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm as grateful. It's oh. thank you. Thank you for sharing. Maybe this was it for today. Well, we have a silent retreat here in the community this weekend. So maybe we invite the greater community to, to join us in we do hourly meditations for at least five minutes on the hour and stay in silence. Some people may even fast. So if you want to join in from where you are, you're welcome today and tomorrow. Okay. Love you all. Yeah, lots of love.